my grandmother always said, where love is, no disease can conquer. There's no cognitive thinking. They're afraid if they release it, that their identity is going to be different. Well, this is really beautiful, isn't it? Um, so we've been having a beautiful conversation offline and and we've just got so passionate and so het up on a conversation that I was like, we need to press the record button. We cannot go any further with this. And today um, I'm so grateful. I haven't seen you two in such a long period of time. Um, we have got been graced with our presence with the gorgeous BT and his partner, Carla. And like I was saying, we were just having a really beautiful, um, powerful, conscious conversation offline. And we all decided that actually this needed to be recorded. So what we're going to be speaking about today is real is rare. OK, it's so important. And I, I can hear the dog. <laughs> he always kicks in, doesn't he? So what we're going to be talking about is real is rare. Now, if you guys don't Yo, mind, bless her. If you guys don't mind, I just want to um, go back over something that we were just speaking about because Carla was just sharing a story about Project Camouflage. And Project Camouflage, some information around Project yes. Camouflage has come up. Uh, Carla, do you just want to repeat that conversation? Because I think that that actually ended up creating this conversation that we're going to have here. Okay, I was uh, listening to a man online, and he was talking about um, back in the day when he was a little younger. He used to be a intelligence deliver person. He would he would handle um, high secret documents, and he would deliver them. And he said they they would go with two people at a time. There would always be him and a partner. And he said they went into this building. They had the document, and he said he never looked at the documents prior. Okay, so he wasn't allowed to. He just delivered. And he said, so something happened that day that his uh, one of the staff people that was with them actually just collapsed. So his partner ran over to help him. In the meantime, he was going to take the uh, materials up to the floor that he was supposed to deliver to. And he said when he got to the elevator, he tripped as he went into the elevator. The documents fell out of the folder and uh, he said he looked at them. And um, he said he's held this information for who knows how long uh, and hasn't said anything about it, but he felt it was time now. And he called it. He said it was labeled uh, uh, camouflage, project camouflage. And he said that basically it said that we are told there are 7 billion people on this planet. And he said there are actually one and the other 6 billion are not human. They're not um, born of God um, and have souls. Uh, they are made, and we know we've known for at least the people that are awake have known that they've been able to clone people, and and uh, we know how they do it now through the DNA. Yeah. And um, so basically, we were talking about well, that makes sense because people aren't waking up, and we're wondering yeah. why aren't people waking up? Well, and, that's and, because they clone. And yeah, and what's so fascinating, like so so fascinating, is that you know, all of us, like, um, respectively, in our own world, our own lives are saying, that person doesn't seem real somehow. Mm -hmm. Like that, it just doesn't, this, this person doesn't seem real. This seems a little bit fake. Like, why is this happening like this? And it's, blimey, it's an amazing conversation to have. It so, is. So with regards to then, then actually we we started stepping into where we're both living right now and the people that we're um, that we're meeting and the way that life is going and we were just talking about how difficult it is these days to find people that are real, and and I'm not talking your people as in they have exactly the same values as you and standards and all the rest of it. I mean just real people that have empathy that have that that care that actually want to make a difference in the world. So you know it's. I really feel as if this is going to help so many people out there almost kind of accept that sometimes in regards to certain people that we meet, we're pushing shit up a hill because they're not actually what we think they are. Right. 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 And, and, and like what we were talking about earlier, you know, and I, 
And I agree a lot too, because I've seen it just, you know, not just here locally, but around, uh, around the social media aspect is, is a fact that, you know, what we were talking about within the truth movement and how it's become more of a, you know, diversion within this aspect of, you know, really seeing the spiritual aspect of what we have to do to move forward. And, and a lot of egotistical stuff has been, you know, coming forward through that truth movement and, and it, it is separating a lot of people. And so again, there's so many, you know, barriers that are, that are coming out within this time frame right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I find it really fascinating because like, as, as we spoke about a short time ago, I stepped away from the truth movement in April 2021 I knew it was my time to go back to focusing on consciousness which is obviously what I was doing before the before all of this um COVID stuff came along so I went back to doing what I call my day job like just helping consciousness raise and I know that that resonates very deeply with the pair of you as well but I also know that you're very much in you know the um legal side of of that so you know I don't have any I'm not saying anybody's right or anybody's wrong all I'm saying is that my personal choice is to work with consciousness so I stepped away from the truth movement but what I've noticed is that the same messages are still beating the same drum now why have we not evolved in the last couple of years and it will be a couple of years you know we're just shy of April why are we not in a position now whereby we are stepping forward at a much greater rates um and i truly believe it is because there are so many people now even the people that we thought would never wake up to the truth are starting mm-hmm. to wake up to the truth so obviously it's giving that more power which means that actually that's holding us back even more than than before when there were some of us that were like right we we're just going to step through this and go so again what what how, how are we actually going to move forwards with this when there is such a huge population of people well, I, I think the biggest problem that we're seeing here just locally, as well as, you know, across the nation by watching social media and just talking to people, you know, and actually, you know, when I was traveling here this last couple of weeks, I, I spoke to so many people from different areas and the, the, the common denominator that each of them had was anger and fear. And, and I, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why we're not able to move forward is because we've, you know, moved through this anger and fear within the truth movement but we haven't let go of the anger and fear we've you know even after we've been you know awakened so to speak and so they're holding on to this energy and and it's like they're afraid if they release it that their identity is going to be different i've got a question just popped in my head i don't know where this has come from but we all trust them do you feel in your honest opinion the both of you do you feel that if you are continuing to perpetuate the same stuff that's been going on for the last couple of years, actually that results, that is a fear. That's an emotion of fear. Or do you think, Oh no, that's just, you know, what do you think? I I, I think it's on the individual's evolution of where they're at at that time. I think it can cause fear, but it doesn't necessarily always will cause fear depending on where that person's at. But again, the fear and the anxiety that I'm referring to are the people that are in a limbo stage because they don't want to do any more research. They just want to listen to this, get their information from somebody else or what have you, and not really dive into it. Uh, it's, it's a difficult time. Well, everybody's in a different place with the quote truth movement. And we found that, um, in our area, when we got together with people that were supposedly like-minded, we found that they would just complain about things, but they had no solutions. Okay. And so they didn't research any solutions or come up with any solutions. And they just kept beating the old same drum. And so we're like, well, this isn't where we are. And we would bring ideas and things to them, but they didn't want to hear them. They would say, they just no, wanted we to don't. bitch. Just yeah, I just yeah. wanted to bitch. And, and yeah. this this again is at low vibration. This is fear. I don't care what people say about that. When you bitch constantly, whether it's about a person or a thing or a situation, and you're not prepared to do something about it, that is fear. It's you know, there's mm-hmm. there's two emotions at the end of the day, right? There's love and there's fear. Uh there's love and there's um yeah, fear. Mm-hmm. So whatever the lower vibration, they wrap up into fear in in my simplistic mind right now. And any of the higher vibrations sit mm-hmm. within love. 
Right. So yeah. for me, if if you know, like, and I'm, uh, it doesn't surprise me that you have been to events and stuff whereby people just want to perpetuate the bitchiness because mm-hmm. we've been conditioned to bitch. Oh, she doesn't look very good. Oh, have you seen the state of her hair? Oh, look at the size of her ass. We've. It doesn't matter what it's been about. Right. right? We've been conditioned to bitch about people from the day we were born because right. blondes want to be brunettes. Brunettes want to be, you know, whatever. You know, we've all been told that we're not good enough. So the way that we get over that is by bitching about people. And, you know, it's I was shocked when I was involved with the protests in London, like shocked. My first protest was in August 2021. My last protest I spoke at was in uh, January, uh, sorry, 2020, August 2020. My last protest I spoke at was January 2021. And it's actually, yeah, I think it was January 2021. So in though in that period of time, I was mortified at the amount of bitchiness and stuff that came through. You know, mm-hmm. he's sleeping with her and that shouldn't have happened. It, like it was just it was cr- it was creating a whole round of um, new situations. And it obviously happens everywhere. OK, it might not be sleeping around, but it might be the fact that they just want to bitch and whinge, yet they're not prepared to take action. Right. It's, right this web of fear this web of heaviness but that's what humanity's been reduced to if you stop and think about it there's no cognitive thinking there's no you know and and again look at those spell words that we've been utilizing too lucy okay you know we, we 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 say human okay instead of man or woman you know son or daughter children you know that you know all those spell words are different and have different meanings and so when you look at human well, what is a hue well, it's a discolorization it's a shadow so what are we shadow man shadow woman under wow. human yeah okay wow. humanity you know everybody's under the shadow okay everybody's under the you know mindset of control okay mm-hmm. And so, so again, the words that we're utilizing, again, we have to, we have to switch up all this new technology and this new understanding, because again, words are a way of programming. And so if you're going to program humanity, shadow people, you're going to use shadow words to control the shadow mass. And so those are the things that we have to understand is, is as, as we come into this understanding of of who we are as men and women okay not 15 different societies of sexual orientation (laughs) (laughs) i thought we could be like a multiple you know there's so many different now (laughs) yeah and and, and so you know if we can if if we as individual men and women can take back the power of who we are versus who we have been told or taught we are and understand that the spiritual being and i've done the same thing that you've done here this year just so you know i i've I've quit giving uh, lectures and talks on on the on the uh, political aspects and i've gone all the way back into the spiritual stuff too oh welcome home so 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 again (laughs) so again we all yeah yeah, and so again we all go through these processes you know and and the thing that like i told carla i says you know I don't mind talking about it, but when society and the people that we're working with expect remedy or redress, however, whatever legal system they're in under legal or law, however, they're going to, you know, find themselves where they can be totally in control of their own life, living in free, you know, being freedom, you know, within that aspect. And, And right now, you know, we have here in the United States, okay, we have the national movement, okay, which I've been a national since, you know, the late 70s, okay, that's when we started really getting into the Constitution. I was graced into the world. Okay, <laughs> and then, you know, sometime in, in the late 90s, I kind of started paying attention to the Secure Party creditor stuff, but I didn't really follow through on any of that, but now we have. And, and so that's another movement, the secure party creditor, and that's dealing with the commercial aspect, taking control of the commercial name, all your aspect of within that energy that the government has you within the commercial field. Mm -hmm. And then we have now we have the aspect of, of true remedy within law, creating our own courts. And so these are the things that we're teaching through evolution. And so everybody's going through these new truth movements. Okay. But one actually leads to the other. And if you choose to stay in the title or under those areas of, of, of legality, then you're able to, you know, 
move through it much easier than if you yeah. wasn't. Yeah. But like, yeah, but like now through law, think about, you know, your law will be different than mine, Lucy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because again, what affects you might not affect me, okay? Exactly. And, and so you have your own legal system, which is a law system, okay? So it's on the opposite side. It's it's where the free men and women live is law. And common law, okay, we all think common law, but it's only common law to the, who's ever in charge at that time. Mm -hmm. So if the legal system is the common law of the country, then that's the common law, yeah, yeah. okay? And a lot of people don't understand there's all these multiple differences. Yeah. So we have to be able to move forward. But but again, like I said, I step back out from doing a lot of that because, again, we want to be able to move into the spiritual realm right now through the rest of this decade. And that's exactly what I was going to say. Right. Because I, I just want to make it very, very clear. I'm not against the truth movement. I mean, I'm dating. <laughs> Who mm -hmm. I'm dating. Do you know what I mean? I have nothing against it. Where I I feel the focus needs to be now is we have got to step forwards as a group of people, as conscious beings, as the ones with souls, we have to say, right, how can we ascend? How can we go forwards? How can we create our reality even better than we already are? And I don't feel that these movements, and if you look back over the past and over history, all of the movements have ended up holding us back in one way, shape or form. You know, mm -hmm. they've, they've served for a short period of time, and I really believe that they do. But actually, for the longer term, they end up slowing things down because there becomes all the bureaucracy, there becomes the paperwork, all the rest of it. And people don't, like you were just saying, BT, people don't move through these stages. They tend to get stuck because yeah. in that movement, they feel something. And rather than going, you know what, I need to choose higher consciousness. I need to choose what is firing my soul up. I need to get connected back to spirit. They're saying, I'm getting attention. I'm getting this. I'm getting that from being in this situation, which is constantly perpetuating more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah and, 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 when, and when you look at okay, people right now are, are stressing out because they don't know what the economic system is going to do. Yeah. Okay. And so you know, the housing market around here in our country is just going crazy. I mean, all, all these areas that people believe are are really good areas, the prices of their homes have like tripled in one year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, you know, people are like saying, okay, if you move to Florida, you know, you're going to pay some serious money now, you know, because again, and the same with other areas. But when we look at the economics and we look at what's going to transition back, you know, we have the cryptocurrencies that are all out there. We have all these other areas of foreign currencies, you know, that are going to be generating different types of revenue. We have all these aspects, but at the same time, nothing is solid and secure because it hasn't occurred. Yeah. And so these people are still like, ah, what do we do? How do we move forward within, you know, our movement without knowing what our funds are going to be like? And so yeah. that's creates a lot of fear here in our, in our communities. And it's, and it's very interesting that it does seem to be the money that is creating fear in people, because as soon as you have that, where should I put my money? I don't care who you are. You're in fear. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't be cautious, don't be careful. But as soon as that thought enters your head, that's panic, which is fear right yeah. yeah yeah you know you can fluff it up every way you want i don't have any fear i'm this i'm that like you have to recognize where fear is kicking in mm -hmm. and and it yeah. tends to be through the financial element of it you know like i'm quite shocked at the way that the people behave about the rb i've got to be honest obviously i'm quite close to a lot of stuff that goes on with the rb because of david so you know i i'm, I'm actually quite shocked at the way that people behave about that yeah and, and and a lot of times too, I mean, I, I can remember when we first started looking at it back in the day of Kuwait and then, you know, when, when Iraq came through and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, to see the difference between the short term of Kuwait and everybody making crazy money and the long term effect of what the Iraqi dinar has created, you know, along with all the other countries, you know, people are just like, just rude and fed up and angry and 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 again it's going to be a blessing so you know whenever it happens it's still a blessing it doesn't matter when it takes place you're still going to be blessed so why are you getting so mad why are you getting upset because people have made promises and commitments and that that hasn't happened and this is right. why for me 
the truth movement has done so many good things, but it's also created animosity in areas which perpetuates fear. Yeah. So this is this is like my my brain works, I think, very differently to a lot of other people because I just cut through and I see things very, very clearly. It doesn't mean I'm right, but I see my pathway through very, very quickly and clearly. And I just feel that if we want to be free, we literally have to choose it and live it. It's as simple as that. We we can't be held back by, well, when the RV money comes in or right. when this happens, because again, we're living in fear. We're, we're basically saying, right, we've got to wait for this. It's, you know. Ooh. Yeah. If, if we go back a little bit, Lucy, to the people that we are around and we're talking about Please. who are these people? You know, they don't seem real. They they have a scammy type, you know, vibe with them, a vibration. They're scammers. They're 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 not real people. They're out there to get something from everybody. And if you stop and think about it, back in the olden days when you had a community, all you had was your honor. Yeah. That's all you had. Okay. Yeah. Was your reputation and your honor. And so you did everything possible to not sully that. Yeah. Okay. And so you would try to, if there was a wrong, you would try to make it right with your neighbor so that everybody was okay and yeah. you didn't create all this chaos. Yeah. And so right now, if you stop and think about it, we're not only cleaning out the worst evil people at the highest levels, we're actually, I believe, cleaning out on every level, even down to your local communities. Yes, I agree. All the people that are not in honor. Yeah. I, okay. I totally agree. And it's and and I I agree with everything that you're saying, Carla, but for me it's not just about honor. I feel that there is, you know, like I'm I'm shocked. Where where I've moved to Spain obviously a few months ago now, I'm shocked at some of the conversations that I've had to have. I'm shocked at, you know, some of the situations that I'm spoken about. And it's and it's exactly that situation. Now I'm not saying the whole of Spain. I'm not saying that at all, just certain elements of what I've been exposed to. Like, I'm actually really quite shocked. Like, I can't go to a certain gym because if, you know, if I'm seen at that gym, that means that I'm part of this. And that just, like, I am not used to that kind of discussion or nonsense in my life. I am a free woman. I go wherever. Now, I get why the people said it to me because they want to keep me safe and all the rest of it, but it doesn't resonate in my soul. So I feel like just adding on a little bit to what you've just said, we have so many people that aren't real. And what's happening is where people are giving these not real people energy, they're actually expanding. And what's happening is that the real people are actually shrinking. Now, uh, the other side of that is when you try to maintain a life of that unreal stuff, it's going to end up biting you hard on the ass. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. No, no, that's, that's definitely a, a true fact. I mean, I, I think, I think all of us have always put our, our, ourselves in a higher position. And, and sometimes, you know, when we we're not at that energy, you know, it, it bites us because again, yeah. we, haven't, we haven't reached, we haven't reached that energy. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so I think that's, that's a, that's an honest fact. I think all of us have probably gone through it, you know, oh, in, yes. in some way, shape or form, but you know, it's, it's amazing to see right now, because again, you know, we came to Florida, you know, looking at Florida from a different mindset, according to what media and everybody else was saying. And then when we got here and, and we started really digging in, you know, and, and looking at what was transpiring here in the state of Florida, it was always on the opposite side of what everybody said, because nobody dug deep enough. Nobody looked deep enough superficial right it's all, all about right. looking at the superficial level but i'm like you guys i go deep into things and you know if if you even just scratch a little bit you get to see that actually it isn't what people are saying it is right you know yeah. on so many levels like i know you're talking predominantly about the political side of things and the people that you've met through like that element of it you know i'm talking about just general life here just general mm -hmm. everyday life, because obviously the gym, things like that, right. that I do on a day to day basis, you know, so it's every element of life. But obviously where our passions are, I'm passionate about going to the gym. Of course, that's where I'm going to figure out where this nonsense yeah. is taking place. You know, right. so it's very important that we just keep bringing it up into our consciousness that just because we're experiencing things right now, it doesn't mean that it has to be part of your reality. Yes, it's real in that moment. 
because obviously you're experiencing it. However, it's up to you whether you choose that to be your reality going forwards. And everybody has a choice, right? It's free will. Yep, yep. And 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 moving forward is is always the the growth standpoint. You know, I mean, if you're going to hold on to it and stay in that same you know frequency all the time of your life and, and never move out of it, then you're never going to experience growth. You're going to just stay stagnant. And so, you know, like with us, you know, we've seen all these different areas and, you know, we're continually moving here in Florida, seeing the different energies and working within them and things of that nature. But at the same time, it's like, like Carl and I look at each other, we're like, okay, we're on three years here. Where are we going <laughs> next? Okay. And so we're looking, you know, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with, with, with setting things up and, you know, setting some time and, and, and really, you know, finding a community that is, uh, aligned alive you know yeah. and, and 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 not just alive in the aspect of you know being awakened but alive in the aspect of furthering their knowledge you know within yeah. the spiritual aspect and, and yeah, the yeah. physical aspect and, and and i'll be real with you guys that is what i am finding um challenging being here because you know i would like to go and meet my tribe at sound healing in places like that it just doesn't exist here you know, right. there are a lot of people that I've met here that are so scared to choose consciousness. You know, they're scared to choose consciousness. They get it. They know that it's a real thing, but they're scared to choose it because everything that they know is of that frequency, the old frequency. And what if I lose my friends? What if um, I can't stay in my job anymore? What if, what if, what if? And, you know, for me, I can't fathom it because I am pretty brave. Like I, I don't fear anything, but anybody that's, not prepared they know but they're not prepared to step forward to me is living in fear so yeah. i got a question for you what advice would you give somebody who's like oh i get it like i get it i get it i get it but i just i'm just fearful like i've got bills to pay i've got mouths to feed i've got you know a reputation to uphold what would you say to those people about you know choosing consciousness choosing spirit over the old three-dimensional world now my advice is you can do both. Okay. It's always been that way. People don't understand. Okay. You've always had both tracks. You're living here on earth in 3d right now, still 3d. You have a certain way that you produce an income for yourselves and your family. That's still part of the track. You can do the consciousness, raising your consciousness, studying all that stuff still while you're still producing for your family. Yeah, yeah. You just know. have to say, I, you don't have to completely shut off one end despite the other end. You, you don't have to do that. It's, it's been going on forever. It, it's been there. It's been available. Yeah. And all you had to do was step into it yeah. and choose using your time. It's how you use your time. Yeah. Okay. So if you use it to study, to help your consciousness, to raise your consciousness, to meditate, to do those things, it's going to come naturally. Yeah. And it actually makes the three-dimensional part easier. Yeah. And yeah. and some there's a point, isn't there? Because I've been through this and I, I know you guys have been through it, but there's a point where it just goes, okay, that's I can just drop away now because actually we're really comfortable here. Right. And you're being provided right. for here and you're getting every single one of your needs met here. Right. So you don't actually need this tie anymore, although obviously you're tied because you're in the, the world of the three dimensions right now. Well, <laughs> well, a lot of times too, you know, and, and I have a lot of friends and I, you know, I'm not putting any of them down. Okay. Just so you guys know, but we've had this conversation, you know, you're my friends. We've talked about it. Okay. So there are many people that just want to stay in the spiritual side. Okay. But then they're always complaining because they ain't got no money. They ain't got this. They ain't got that. Because again, like Carla was saying, until you stay in both directions and find the balance, mm -hmm. see, we all have balance. The only time we don't have balance is when we lose it. And so the key is to recognize when you lose your balance. Yeah. So again, move into the spiritual side, keep working it. Once, like you said earlier, you know, spirit will provide Okay. I mean, I know for a fact, prove, Carla, as soon as you yeah. prove that you're, you're being honest with it, it, it yeah. provides, right? Provides. So but when you go into the spiritual realm also, and when you're meditating and you learn that, and you learn how to truly manifest, then like you say, it just becomes, you know, something that you do on a regular basis. And this, 
3D pull in the financial world loses its hold. Yeah. Okay, so there's a time when, as you all know, you're in business and you're every day and you're in the rat race and it has such a hold on you. But once you break that and start getting into the more um, meditative states and break away from that, you can actually understand that you can manifest what you need and that stress goes away. Yeah. yeah, and and, yeah. and and it's like when Carla and I first met and stuff, and, and she was going through some of her cycles of, of evolution as well, like all of us do. And she was in business for 38 years doing her stuff. And so she was willing to, you know, and waiting to make that change into the spiritual side to move yeah. out of that. And yeah. so when we got together, you know, that was one of the things that, that, you know, she fell right in line with because she was ready for it. Right. And I'd always practice both, but it, in my younger years, sometimes I would just leave the consciousness uh, area and just stick with the 3D and just work that really hard. And then I'd get back into it. And so I vacillated back and forth my whole life. My mother was actually into the consciousness movement. So I had a an early, you know, introduction into On that. <laughs> yeah. So so it was it was helpful, definitely. But then it came a time when I met BT that I had to make a decision. Am I going to stay in this particular rat race, which I could have done till I died? Of course. Um, of course. Or am I going to break away and completely leave that and go into um, the healing and uh, the heart and get out of the head so much? And, uh, but actually maintain somewhat of a balance, but a more comfortable balance. Yeah. And so um, it was it easy? No. It was not easy. No. It was difficult. As you probably know, Lucy, it's not an easy. No, uh, not at all. Because I, I err on the side of, I, I would rather be in the spiritual world. Like, as I said earlier, like that's where I would rather be. However, I've got a successful business and I maintain that. And I do truly believe that 90% of the time I'm balanced. You know, mm -hmm. I can I can create in the 3D world, but I can also manifest in the 5D world and I can bring that together. Um, right. The thing, the area where I, uh, I guess, struggle is is a really, you know, it's a bit, I, I don't really like that word, but I'll use it so people understand what I'm talking about, is words not matching actions. And it's that human thing, like, I, because I, I know that we're all connected. I know that we're all one. So why would you say one thing to somebody and then do something different? What that that's the bit of the 3D, 5D thing, because I just think, you know, the vibration that I'm going to put out is what I'm going to get back. So, you know, like I get very confused. The money side of it, not at all. I don't have a problem with that. But it's I, I it's almost like I go back to being a child and I'm like, hang on a minute, I can't get that. That doesn't marry that. And, and I can't quite uh, bring those together. So I think there's many elements of this. I don't think it's just the financial side of it because I am so much happier in the spiritual world. Like I really am. I feel comfortable there. Like quite frankly, some mornings when David goes to me, you were chatting so much last night. This is what you said. This is what you said. This happened. That happened. You got flipped over. This happened. And I'm just like, quite frankly, I'd rather stay there. Like I'd rather stay out there because I'm left alone. I'm just, I'm just peaceful out there. I don't have to deal with these. What, what, what's that about? Like, why has that person said that? Like what? You know, yeah. it's, it's extremely interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it's all part of our, our growth, you know, yeah. understanding, you know, how we're changing within our own frequencies that we've created since childhood or, or yeah. been manipulated since childhood. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and we are going through a massive purging. I know you guys will uh, agree with this. You know, we are going through a massive purging period. We're healing. Every single element of ourself has to heal right now. And nobody is exempt from this. Nobody. Likewise, right. Mama G mother nature Gaia whatever you want to call her she's going through a massive purging process as well right now because one can't ascend without the other like we're all going through this together so you know all of us are purging and it's it's not pretty is it no. it is not <laughs> I don't know what your dreams are like but I've had some crazy dreams <laughs> I don't even know if it's dreams anymore if I'm just slipping into an They're alternative like realm yeah. like yeah. because I, I, I'm literally telling David stuff in my sleep of what's going on. And I'm like telling him that there's this church or there's a castle on top of a hill. And, and he's like, thankfully he remembering it all. And I'm like, how do you know this stuff? He's like, you were telling me last night, you know, it's, they're, they're real. They're so like I feel it's, we're mm. just collapsing the, the worlds all into one and they're all just starting to merge together. But obviously when we go into like a super conscious state, that's how we connect to it a lot easier. Right. Yeah but dreams are wild. 
I know. Like yeah. I woke up this morning for the first time in months. I actually remembered like a proper dream, not an astral travel, not a going into a different realm, like an actual dream. And I was like, that was wild last night. <laughs> Hey Lucy, have you been bringing up? Have you been bringing up in your consciousness past things that you didn't like the way they ended? Have you been? Has any of that been coming up into your consciousness? These events that you didn't like? Yeah, how, yeah, how yeah, ended? absolutely. To bring okay. it into wholeness, I'm finding that's happening quite a lot right now, and I'm actually being challenged with it on the in the 3D world as well. It's like, right, you are being faced with exactly the same situation that you've had before. How are you going to deal with it this time? And it is just a test from the universe to say, are you sure? Are you sure you really want this? You know, and it's, I just find it fascinating with what's happening right now. I'm assuming you've been getting that, Carla, because you mentioned yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's such a wild ride, isn't it? Why did, part of me is like, why did we sign up for this? But then the other one's like, put me on the broomstick and let me go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I yeah. Know. Great times, great times. It's just getting better too, because again, all of us, as we, you know, elevate within that, consciousness of the 3d and moving into the spiritual end and and we hit that high note so to speak it's it's amazing i mean when i see somebody that really is moving into that area you see their energies their frequencies you can feel them even when they communicate there's no doubt there's no fear there's just you know joy because they're happy that they're at this time but they're knowing their purpose for this time yeah and I think that's that's always going to be a you know difficult movement as we move through this decade. What is your purpose? Yeah, yeah. What is your passion? What are you really meant to do? I love I love the, the purpose thing though because a lot of people. My most asked question of people that come into my inbox is, I want to know my purpose. And for me, at a basic level, all of us are here to love and and be loved. It's as simple as that. That is our main purpose. Is we've got to remember love because we're all so wounded. We're all so broken. We're all so whatever we've got so much shadow work and all the rest of it we've forgotten what love like true love is meant to be we believe it toxic we believe it controlling we believe it holds us back we believe it's promiscuous we believe that you know certain elements of love need to be a particular way and it's just a, a load of shit love is about remembering your truth and being able to allow others to share their truth and hold space for them without judgment you know, it's no. knowing that each other is suffering and just allowing each other to articulate it in the way that it needs to be. And I'm not just talking intimate relationships. I'm talking generally. We need to be able to hold space for each other. That said, we don't need to take people's shit on. We don't, you know, we do need to have boundaries in place and things like that. But for me, that's the number one focus. And then when you get love for self, that's when the purpose that you incarnated for starts to show its head to you from my from my experience and, and in my opinion i don't know how you guys feel on that no i think i think you could have two opinions on that one and still be correct because i get it's it, it's it's what it is you exactly. know i mean it is and when you do find that that ability of self-love and again you know when we look at self-love it starts from the very acceptance of our childhood yeah, okay to present and at the same time, if you're capable of understanding your past lives, you have to be able to accept those energies as well to be able to move forward with self-love because we carry some of those energies into our new world. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be able to, you know, recognize each of those energies and how they direct us within our past. You know, like you were saying earlier, you know, we have different paths, but at the same time, just because your path goes to the right and mine goes to the left or goes forward, whatever the case would be, doesn't mean that we aren't necessarily going to reunite Absolutely. down the road. Absolutely. And I think that's the main purpose is, is all of us to accept self-love, go through our own individual path, reunite with our friends, our family, or, you know, whatever our community that we create. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, we're building a better world of self-love because Absolutely. again, you know, my grandmother always said, where love is, no disease can conquer love that and it's so true yeah. i love i love the word that you use bt as well acceptance mm -hmm. acceptance is the first step of this right you just got to accept where you've been what you've been through like i'm not saying say it's okay but just accept that it's all happened in divine timing and a divine plan like i know i am protected every single day every single step that i take i know that i am being protected 
And that's because I accept my flaws and all. And I and and all of us, we need to be vulnerable about our flaws, right? We need to accept that just because that's the person I was 10 years ago doesn't mean that that's the person I am today. Like, you know, it's it's acceptance is such a powerful word. Yeah. yeah. And, and 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 it's not a, you know, it's not something that's going to happen just overnight, people. OK, I'm telling <laughs> you experience okay i mean there was an issue in my life that took me 25 years to accept okay and but once i accepted my life changed instantaneously overnight but until that time you know a lot of us we feel we accept okay we feel that we put effort towards something and we've accepted it but if it continues to bother you on a you know daily or every other day or something you know in the middle of the week comes up and it agitates you due to that you haven't accepted it okay and i mean i'm speaking from personal experience okay so 25 years later through acceptance i was able to heal not only myself but others that were involved that i had no idea that i was even going to be helping in that aspect of healing Amazing. because i thought it was all about me at that time okay of acceptance okay <laughs> listen all right you know it's all about bt but it wasn't okay but once i accepted that it was so much easier it's so much easier you know lucy you said accept yourself and you need to think about that that's very true because haven't you always known that person out there the man or woman and their so sweet and everybody just loves them and they just say the right thing at any moment when they're around you and you just feel this wonderful feeling when you're there and you think to yourself man if I was just more like them you know if I just had that whatever that is but if you accept the fact that that isn't you yeah you don't have that life becomes much easier yeah and you weren't supposed to have that otherwise you would have that Right. I mean, you know, people uh, in my office used to call me the little general. Well, I still do. I still do. I still do, people. I'm telling you. (laughs) I used to just laugh it off, you know, but when I look back on it, you know, that's probably pretty right. Uh, Right on. And uh, some qualities that uh, of people I knew, I just don't have those qualities and I never would. And it's okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Because we're all a piece of the puzzle and we're all coming together. And that's the whole point of this. We're all coming together right now. We're not here to hold each other back or compete or compare. It's just about, okay, this is you. This is me. Like, I can't handle that element, but it's okay that you've got it. Just speak to me about it in this way or whatever. And and it means we can still come together, all of us, without actually having to change. Right. Yeah. You know? right. Yeah. Yeah. And and at the same time, you know, when we look at, you know, the aspect of change, okay. If there's an area there or an element that you can't accept, change will not take place. And that's, that's mm-hmm. the thing that we have to really consider because again, once you do accept and you do change, it's a whole new path and a direction because you're not dragging the rut with you. You know, you're not, you know, got a backpack full of shit. You're not bringing it with you. You know, you've left it there at the station, so to speak. And, right. I, and I think that's what we have to do. We have to be able to release. And just because we have conflict with somebody doesn't mean that, you know, once we, you know, step outside of their energy that we don't love them, we don't care about them, that we don't think about them, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it's we're good, elevating. And, and, it's and a good, that's, a, that's a good point, BT, because a lot of people will have an argument or a disagreement and then that's it. That's it. It's done. Why? Why does that have to be so dramatic? Yeah. 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 And, 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 and again, it, it's like if your consciousness raises and, and the people that you're with consciousness goes lower than what they were even were in the beginning of your relationship. Okay. Then you have such a divide there that, you know, it's going to be detrimental to the friendship and relationship. It really will, because again, they're, they're not in the same frequency and, and all we can do is, you know, love those people, send them positive energies, but at the same time, if we're with them and it causes chaos in their life, then we're doing a disservice to their life. We need to be able to step back and let them deal with what they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't want to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because they, they, they want to hold on to it. But again, until you, you know, can accept the releasing of it for their highest good, not because I have to have the highest good. Say, wow, that's and, really wise words. Yeah. That's, because that's again, a it, really powerful message that you've just said there, BT, really powerful. 
well, it's it's hard because again, you know, you know, we've we've had friends over the years and stuff like that where, you know, their consciousness level just came to a dead end because again, they they lived in that fear. You know, they didn't want to move forward. They just wanted to believe everything else and just kind of turn their back on what the true aspect of what was going on around them. And, you know, Carl and I are like, you know, well, if we're together with these people and all the time we're together, there's always a conflict and it isn't our conflict. It's that conflict over there that we're doing a disservice to them because as much as we love them, Every time we're together, they're arguing. I mean, that's not good. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so, yeah. so, so we move ourselves away from that, and we say, okay, we love you guys. You know, you know, you know. I don't know what's going on in your relationship. Why every time we we happen to be the ones you're together with, and you freak all out on each other, odd or us or whatever, you know. Yeah. But we, but we have to because again, we're all going through this change, and you know, I just wanted to say that you know, a lot. I'm sure a lot of people I've spoke to a lot of people are going through the same thing. Yeah. And, I, and you know, I imagine just, a lot of people that hang out with you two though, because you're so high vibration, it all it almost feels like a little bit of a threat because normally with couples, one slightly higher than the other, but you two are, are an amazing pairing. Actually, you're very, very, very. You're very lucky to have found each other. You're an amazing pairing, and. You know, I imagine, like I say, when other couples are with you, they they watch you and they're like, oh, why can't we be like that? Or the woman's like, maybe I'm, I'm making an assumption here, but the woman's like, God, why can't he just elevate like him? You know, that kind of thing without consciously doing it. It's a complete subconscious process that's going on behind closed doors. So that's really interesting. But what you said, BT, such wise words, such wise words. Mm -hmm. I think that that message is going to land so deeply with so many people that watch this video. Good, good wow well that's, that's, all, that's all we got to do you know just keep 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 speaking our words being yeah. true you know do you but, know how and, happy i am that you're back in the spiritual world more than the legal stuff now i'm so happy yeah, yeah. Well, well it's you know as a warrior and all of us are warriors okay anybody that's in this movement has to be a warrior okay yeah. and in our tradition we refer to you as a peace warrior you know you're you're you're, you're here to you know, rainbow warrior, whatever you want to terminology Love wise, warrior. but, 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 but you're here to set a stand. Okay. You're not here to be pushed around. Okay. You're here to set your ground, not just for yourself, but once you do it, it gives that person next to you the ability to say, Hey, if they can do it, I can do it. And it brings a chain effect, just like what we were talking about at the very beginning of nanotechnology and all this stuff. Instead of having robots being a chain effect, the spirit and the soul became one and they create the spiritual energy that changes everything around you. And it's just activating that. It's activating that energy within those of us that are real and coming together as a, as a unified unit, right? Oh, God. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. And this is what soul school is about. I love it so much. I love it so much. Oh my God. I love speaking to you too. We need to do this much more frequently. It's been bloody months. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, Oh my God, this conversation has been amazing. I'm so glad that we recorded it though. Uh, I'm so I, glad I, that we recorded yeah. it because I, I feel that people are going to have such gold off the back of this. Yeah. You know, they really are everything that we've been thinking about, like, Oof, does that person really have a soul? Like they seem a bit like, you know, soulless. Now they're going to be like, ah, maybe that is one of those people, you mm -hmm. know, and there's no judgment. There's no judgment with it, but at least we're bringing the consciousness into a subject that's open for review, right? Right. That's right. Hey, and I tell you, there's a lot of people out here that I'm definitely reviewing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have to have you back for that one. Right. I think we should stop this video here and then we can continue okay. our chat offline. Okay. Ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. We love you very, very much. And comment if you want these two back very, very soon. All right, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Talk to you Bye -bye. soon.